Today I'll be showing you how speedrunners can beat the password game in under 30 seconds. This is a game where you need to make a very complicated password that follows 35 different rules and the speedrun has gotten incredibly optimized. So to start, every run begins by pasting this text, but that's a little hard to look at with all the different fonts. So here's what it is when all the characters are normal and we'll go back to the resized version later. And right away, once you paste this password, a ton of the rules we need to worry about are already completed. For the first four rules, they're that your password must have at least five characters, include a number, uppercase letter, and a special character, which are all pretty obviously done. Then rule five is that all digits in the password must add up to 25, which we have two ones, two nines, and a five solving that one. And rule six is you must include a month of the year, which we choose May. After that, rule seven is having a Roman numeral in our password, so we put XXXV, which also solves rule nine, since our Roman numerals need to multiply to 35. And finally, rule eight is that we must include one of our game's sponsors, so we put Shell. Now rule 10 is when our speedrun actually finally starts, and here you need to include a CAPTCHA in the password. For this rule, I like to find a CAPTCHA with only letters, so we don't break rule 5 and need to change our other numbers. Next rule 11 is to include today's world will answer, and there are two options for this. The strategy that the world record uses is to set your clock to a day in the future. This way there's no world will answer since that day hasn't happened yet, and it gives you the rule for free. But if you don't want to change the date, you don't really have to. I did my run on September 13th, 2024, where the wordle was harsh, and I was able to make it work pretty well with Shell. So either way, this is not a difficult rule, and you're not going to lose time no matter what you decide. Now rule 12 and 13 will also get auto-completed, because 12 requires having a two-letter symbol from the periodic table, and we have vanadium, einsteinium, and platinum, and then rule 13 is to have the current phase of the moon in the password, so we just put them all. But on to rule 14, it's back to actually playing since this rule is all about guessing the correct country from a GeoGuessr picture. Now you can just be really good at GeoGuessr for this one, or you can memorize every possible picture. See, these pictures aren't actually random, and Globox64, the same person who made the guide for this speedrun, has a spreadsheet with a bunch of the countries. I chose to memorize a fair amount of them, but you can also have a cheat sheet on the side with a distinguishing feature of each picture, like putting Fountain for Italy and Golden Statue for Cambodia. I'll leave all the resources in the description, by the way, along with Globox channel so feel free to check them out yourselves. Anyways, after finding the correct country for rule 14, rule 15 is to put down a leap year, and writing zero solves that rule. Now the year zero doesn't actually exist, but by some coding logic, this actually works. And after that, we're on to rule 16, and for this one, you get a chessboard, and need to write the best possible move in algebraic chess notation. Now there are apparently 193 possible positions that you can get for this question, so you can either memorize those, or become okay at chess. You don't even really need to become good at chess, honestly, since for this speedrun, most of these solutions include putting their king in check, so that's all I really look for, and I'll usually just look for queen moves so we don't add more atomic numbers. The game will always stop you here though, since our chess notation adds in a number, but we can just subtract that number from one of our nines. Now rule 17 is to add an egg to your password named Paul, rule 18 is to have the elements in your password's atomic numbers add up to 200, and rule 19 is to have all your vowels be in bold, all of which are already done. But rule 20 makes our password go on fire. This fire starts randomly at some point in the password, and if you don't stop it, the fire will keep destroying more and more of it. So you can either have really quick reaction speed and put it out immediately, or I sometimes like to copy the whole password except for Paul, right before we fix our numbers, adding up to 25, and then paste the correct password over the now destroyed one. You do have to fix the numbers one more time with this, but that's not too bad, and it's way more consistent. Then rule 21 is to have three bodybuilder guys in the password, which we already do. Rule 22 is to have an affirmation, so we have I am loved, and rule 23 hatches Paul, who needs to eat three caterpillars every minute, and that's why we start the run with six of them. Just make sure you don't have more than nine at any time, since then Paul gets overfed and dies. Now on to rule 24, we need to include the URL of a YouTube video of a random link the game gives us. Thankfully though, Globlock64 also created a spreadsheet with every possible video length, and we can just copy it over to replace ESPT. Next, for rule 25, we need to select two letters that we can no longer include in the password. Usually the safe bets are J, K, Q, Z, W, and R, 
and then you just have to pay attention to which one of these you haven't used. The YouTube spreadsheet also includes which of these letters our YouTube link uses, so that helps as well. Now rule 26 is to have twice as many italic characters as bold, and rule 27 is to have at least 30% of the password in the Wingdings font, both of which are auto-completed, but then rule 28 gives us a color and we need to write down its hex code. I just use a program on my computer to give me the hex and it works out pretty easy. This can also add more numbers though, so we might need to change around some things to make it equal to 25 again, but usually not too much of a problem. Now rule 29 is auto-completed by having all Roman numbers be in Times New Roman, and then rule 30 we have some more work to do. This rule has us turn the font size of every digit into that digit square. So for example, we make 5 have a font size of 25, and 7 have a font size of 49. This is why some of our text is normally unable to be seen, since we have the option to make things a font size of 0 or 1. Then in rule 31, we need to change font sizes again by making sure every instance of the same letter has a different font size, so just gotta hope you don't have too many repeats. Next for rule 32, we need to contain the length of our password in our password. So that's why we include 101 from the beginning, and then you can just remove move or add a few wingdings dots to make it 101 characters. It's also important that it's 101 exactly, since rule 33 is to have the length of your password be a prime number. Now rule 34 is a freebie since the game skips it, but finally rule 35 is a little tricky, because this rule should be auto-completed provided you did everything right. See, before we started the run, we set our clock to a little bit before 1am. If you're going for a sub minute time, you can do like 30 seconds beforehand, and if you're going for something like sub 3 minutes, you would do 12.58. So provided you got your desired time, the clock should be exactly 1am, which we've included in the password from the very beginning, and there we go, it's finally done. At this point, the game finishes out by asking you if this is your final password, but before clicking yes, you need to copy your full password, since after clicking yes, the game asks you to retype the full password and disables the ability to copy it. Yeah, this rule may have ruined a run or two for me before, but after pasting the password, that's the full speedrun done. And to finish the video, here's a speedrun with everything all together. Now first thing, I'm not good enough to actually get a sub 30 second. That's a lot of memorization you have to do, but I still think I got pretty good at this game. Now for this GeoGuessr picture, I saw there were a couple cars, I actually needed some help for that one, so I looked at my cheat sheet. After that, for the chess notation, I was looking for queen moves, and what I went with was queen f5, and that worked. I'm not smart enough to know why, but it did. Then of course, it was time for the fire, so I did do the copy and paste strategy, we just got rid of all that stuff, then we had to replace that back to a 4, then it gave us the YouTube video, you see I have the YouTube spreadsheet right there, we can just go look up which one we're gonna need, and paste it where ESPT is, which completely replaces everything, so we're good with that. We will have to fix our numbers again though, so I have to turn this 4 into a 1. And for the letters we sacrificed, I just went with JK and hoped it worked, which it did. Then we got the color, we could just go ahead and use our color picker to figure out what that's going to be, and we got lucky because the only numbers in that color were zeros. So it was time to resize everything, and I was just hoping there weren't too many letters we would have to resize along with the numbers, so we get through the numbers first, and we actually got pretty lucky on that too, only a few things we actually had to do. When you can, you want to combine your resizings like we did for the A and E. Unfortunately, A was already taken, or at least that font size for it, and then I picked another one that was already taken, so I was kind of panicking. I was like, I want the sub 130, but we can get that X, and then we have to make sure it includes the length of the password. We just get rid of some dots, paste it, and that's time 127, which puts us at seventh place on the leaderboards. All right, subscribe if you enjoyed. Bye.